one thing that needs to be used for uh, graphite furnace AAS are matrix modifiers. These are things that you have to add to your sample and your standard solutions. And they, their function is to increase the residence time. Okay, residence time, the time at which the atoms stay in the graphite cube. Because remember the The beam from the source will go through the cube and the atoms form will then absorb the radiation. So you want the atoms form to stay in that cube for as long a time as possible. Okay? If not, it will just be formed and flow out of the gases. So these matrix modifiers increase the residence time of this chromic vapor. Uh, because, uh, like they say, some atoms are very volatile. So these are this is a particular example of a matrix modifier, ammonium carbonate, which you would add in the analysis of lead, for example. Because if you have lead chloride in your sample, this is particularly volatile, which means that your lead chloride, your analyte is lead, you are interested in lead, but because the fact that lead chloride is volatile, it might be lost even before the atomization sequence. Okay. It might be lost during the ashing, for example. So that means you already lost your analyte. And then when it comes to the time when you want to take the absorbance, the number of atoms has been reduced. So by using matrix one fire, you make it, uh, you increase the residence time, you know, by, by this particular sequence that is shown here. Uh, you know, the ammonium reacts with the, with the lead and the other ions so that you form this lead carbonate which probably is less volatile compared to lead chloride. Okay. So the, this is just one example of a matrix modifier. There are several others, so it depends on which, for what element, what matrix modifier would be, uh, would be necessary. <coughs> Remember, you would not only add it to your sample, you may also add it to your standard solutions. And because you are adding some external reagent to your sample, you must make sure, of course, that the matrix modifiers that you use are, do not contain your analyte, you know, are fairly uh, high purity, so that you know, you're not adding some metal which you are interested in to your sample and your standards. This one we've looked at. So basically, for graphite, because you can use small samples using the inert gas, you have a non-reducing atmosphere, and the big difference between graphite and flame is the longer residence time of atoms in the furnace compared to the flame. This is another another atomizer. which um, we don't have, you know, it's not normally used, I think, but it is available. It's uh, the glow discharge atomization for solid samples. So it works on a di different principle, uh, but essentially the purpose is, because it's, an atom it's for atomization, you, do the, you want to produce the atoms. So it's now produced in a, in a by glow discharge, so somewhat different compared to the uh, graphite furnace. So this is the third kind of atomization, okay? glow discharge atomization. And then we go on to a uh, fourth type over here. Um, but this is, a, is in a, an accessory that we normally get. We have it downstairs, okay? So usually you can have flame, graphite, and you can also have your hybrid generation. So from the name, you must form a hybrid. Hybrid means some compound with hydrogen. So hybrids are formed and they are heated to form your atoms. So before you form your atoms of your analyte, you form the compound with hydrogen, the hydrides. So what takes place now is in you, you might have your burner head, but on top of the burner head 
we now have a ship for it. On top of your belly head, you now have a quartz tube. Okay, a quartz tube through which your beam must go through. Okay, so the atoms will be formed in this quartz absorption tube. This tube is then connected to a reaction vessel where what happens is the hydride is formed. So your sample solution, instead of putting it through the nebulizer to form aerosol, you now put it in a reaction vessel. Okay, your sample will be here. You add some, this is wrong, NaBH4, eh? sodium borohydride. You add a reducing agent to your sample. So the reducing agent will react with your metals in the solution to become some metal hydride, MH2, MHX, whatever, okay? Some hydride, some compound with hydrogen. And with, into the reaction vessel also, you will purge in some inert gas. And usually you use nitrogen, you don't use argon. Argon is too expensive. So nitrogen is purged into the reaction vessel. And these, the hydrides that are formed in solution will become gas. So essentially you bubble the nitrogen gas in to get the hydrides out of solution and into the quartz tube. So this flow of gas will then bring the hydrides into this quartz tube and this quartz tube is being heated by your flame and those hydrides form will then dissociate to atoms from the species. So it's a different, it works differently. Last time you just had the flame, so you put your aerosol into the flame and the droplets of liquid will undergo dissolvation, volatilization, dissociation, etc. in the flame. Now, you don't, don't uh, introduce your sample in that way as an aerosol, but in fact, you will now have some reaction going on. So it's not all metals that will form hydrides. Only certain metals are analyzed by hydride generation. Namely, arsenic, bismuth, tellurium, that's basically you. Um, um, selenium is also done in this way. The hydride generation. So this accessory is called the hydride genera uh, generation accessory where you then form hydrides. But the ultimate thing is still the same. You want to form the atoms. It's just that you now do it through the formation of hydrides. And the advantage of this hydride generation method is now because you put your sample in here and your sample might contain other elements which do not form hydrides easily, you know, it can form maybe it has sodium, uh, calcium, whatever. So some elements do not form hydrides easily. So these elements will then still be in the reaction vessel. So essentially by using this hydride generation, you are selectively uh, taking the elements of interest as a hydride and the rest are to be behind. So you isolate sort of, you know. So if you want to do the analysis for arsenic, uh, the arsenic will form hydrides and go in here. The rest, which do not easily form hydrides, will be left behind. Compared to if you were introducing it as an aerosol, everything goes into the plane. Here is selective. Those that only form hydrides will go, will go into this tube and become uh, and form atoms. And dissociate to atoms. So in this way, it's, uh, that's why you can get high, uh, lower protection limits using this hybrid generation for the elements that I mentioned just now. Arsenic, uh, bismuth, tellurium, selenium, a few metals that we uh, do, uh, do the analysis by hybrid generation. After having looked at the several atomization methods, laying, graphite furnace, the glue discharge, and the hydride generation, we now go back to looking 
at each position. So we won't look, look at atomization, uh, the atomizer again. Now we want to look at the uh, what sources are used for AS. Now what? Remember Beer's law? For atomization? Or rather for absorption? Absorbance is proportional to concentration. This is a part length. This is concentration. This is a characteristic of the uh, of the absorbing species. So different metals will have different epsilon. Okay, so now you are describing the absorbance. Uh, how it is related to concentration because this is this forms the basis of your method. Okay, you want to determine concentration and you measure the absorbance. So this is Beer's law. As we have said, Beer's law is only limited to lower concentrations. It is only A absorbance is only linear to C up to a certain point. So Beer's law you only use it for uh, dilute low concentrations. Beyond certain concentrations, A is no longer linear with concentration. So in order for Beer's law to be obeyed, one of the requirements is that the source bandwidth, when you talk about absorption, you must have a source, a source of light that you shine onto your atoms and the atoms absorb. Okay? So now we're talking about the light that comes out from the source, its bandwidth. Okay. Oh, done. <laughs> okay, I don't hear the difference. Tak ada kan? Hello, hello. Oh, mesti dekat tu. Macam mana takkan nak buat bodoh aku? Hello. Yes. Okay, the source bandwidth. What is bandwidth? When I mention bandwidth, what is it? You know, that's why I said anything that you mention, these words, something must come, some idea must pop into your head. Bandwidth. What is it? Because if not, these words are like German, Greek. Doesn't mean anything to you. Bandwidth. The peak at the half. Okay, okay. What, what is it we're measuring? What is it that we're measuring? The width, the range of wavelength at at half the peak height. Remember? Anytime you talk about bandwidth, you're talking about some spectrum here. So now when you talk about source bandwidth, is the radiation coming, you're looking at light at a certain frequency coming from the source. Okay? So it says for Beer's law to be obeyed, this effective bandwidth of the light coming from the source must be narrow compared to the absorption bandwidth in order for you to have a linear relationship between absorbance and concentration, which is what you want. So now, source bandwidth, light coming from the source. Atomic absorption bandwidth is the absorption profile of the atoms. Remember, we were talking about uncertainty principle, Doppler broadening, uh, pressure broadening, okay? You're talking now, here just now we're talking about source. Another one, you're talking about the, how the atom absorbs, also has a certain bandwidth.
And if we were talking about the sodium 3S to 3P, it should be only one line, should be only one wavelength, okay? Because it's only uh, low, one level at a lower energy level and a higher energy level. So actually, the energy should be one value. But because of the uncertainty principle, pressure broadening Doppler effect, the line, absorption line, will not be a single line, but a, having a finite width, okay? But it's fairly narrow. So now what we're saying is that the, the light coming out from the source, the effective bandwidth must be as narrow, okay? Not fatter than the atomic absorption uh, bandwidth. Uh, as it says here, the, in terms of the, <coughs> the band, uh, uh, atomic bandwidths are about 0.002 to 0.005 nanometers. However, your mono, monochromator slit width, I mean, that's why I said, you must read, what is it? One hour before class, one hour after class. If not, it's just things, stories that were told three weeks ago that didn't stick anywhere until the test come and hopefully it sticks, right? So that shouldn't be, because now you talk about, oh, bad slit width. What, what has slit width to do with this bandwidth? Because remember the slit width had also some equation WD negative one, effective bandwidth, okay? Uh, the light coming out from the monochromator will depend on the slit width. Bigger slit width, bigger bandwidth. So if you compare to the monochromator uh, slit width, if you just use that, you will not get a linear calibration curves. So in order to get, in order to meet this requirement, the source bandwidth must be as narrow as the atomic bandwidth. You have to use line sources. You have to use sources which give out narrow lines, and they must be line sources. Remember we said line, band, continuum? Line sources must be, the emitting species must be atoms or ions, then you'll get, only you'll get narrow lines. If you get molecules, band. If you have continuum like tungsten lamp, hydrogen lamp, deuterium lamp, continuum sources, very broad. Okay, so in order to meet this requirement, you must use the uh, atomic source, uh, line sources. So what these things, what this next diagram is supposed to show you is basically uh, what, what was mentioned uh, in the previous slide, okay? So what we want to show here is up here we have, these are the lines coming out from your line source. So what I showed you, the hollow cathode lamp for copper, let's say. So these might be <coughs> showing the different wavelengths of copper coming out from the copper lamp. How did this light come out from that copper lamp? We will see how it works after this. But essentially, they are copper emission lines. How does light come out from a source? It must be that the electron must undergo a transition from higher energy level to lower energy level and give out light. That's how you get this light. So the jump must be higher energy level to lower energy level. So in that source, excitation must have occurred first. Then only it can jump down. If you don't jump up, how can you jump down? Okay. So electrons must be excited first. Then when it comes, uh, <coughs> drops, relaxes to ground state, then only it gives out characteristic lines. So these are the radiation given out by a certain source, let's say it's copper, so it's copper lines. And we have identified that we want to use <coughs> uh, one of the lines to measure the atomic absorption of copper. And usually we use the resonance line 324 nanometers for copper. Okay, so let's say this is a 324 nanometers. So we have set our monochromator 2324 and using a certain slit will be the monochromator bandwidth, which means that <coughs> coming out of the monochromator will be this wide, this range of wavelengths, okay? But because the line source is so thin, you 
only get even though the, the monochromator will allow this fat uh, will come through. Maybe it's important to get our reference uh, right in terms of what are we looking at now. We have your source. We just want to look at your monochromator, I suppose, which slit. Okay? If this source was continuum lamp, What's a continuum? What's a continuum source? For example, tungsten. We just now. What is the coming out from a continuum source? Many over a you have radiation coming out of large a range of wavelengths. Okay, like for tungsten lamp, you get your visible, you get some IR, you get the whole visible, some IR, some. Uh, Maybe near UV, near UV, maybe, maybe, okay? But for a line source, you get only radiation, certain frequencies only. Let's get that right. Spectrum continuum source. So if AS, we use <coughs> a continuous source, but we use monochromator to the coming out, will be this wide. Using certain slit width, <coughs> light coming out from the monochromator will be full. Full within this, this monochromator. If we use a source, we only get line coming out. Not the whole, you know, not right over the whole inch of the monochromator bandwidth. So this is the this is the absorption profile of atom. Okay, it has certain width. After absorb, so this will go through the atoms and get absorbed. And after it comes out, part of it has been absorbed by this by the atoms. So from this initial if you think of it as PO, <coughs> it then becomes and through your circuitry uh, you measure log A equals to log P over P to get your absorption. So that's when here it must it must be narrow this uh, bandwidth of your source must be narrow compared to your absorption of your and why is absorption atom better compared to the uh, <coughs> the the one absorbed is a copper atom. The uh, source is also a copper lamp, which copper atoms are emitting this. Why is this line narrow compared to one? Remember here, flame uh, absorption, the atomic flame, these atoms are formed in the flame. High temperature, oh, some broadening due to uh, pressure, maybe. So usually the atom. Uh, absorption spec as its uh, uh, width there compared to the it's coming out from now only we introduce the other sources, sources for it which meets requirement mentioned just now the bandwidth be narrowed compared to the <coughs> absorption profile and how we make sure that it's a narrow absorption uh, emission narrow bandwidth it atoms are formed in the sources is the atom that give out the radiation so <coughs> that get those line spectra so one one of the sources is called the cathode lamp. We, uh, many times you see created as PL. Now, <coughs> this is an example, example of spectrum. Uh, produce line 
scientific for the land used for cattle. What makes the hollow lamb is it has a hollow cattle. An anode <coughs> of the anode will be at a certain voltage. It's <coughs> encompassed in a pots, uh, container of some sort, which has um, some inner neon at a low okay. So if you want to do a copper analysis, get a hollow cathode and the cathode will surely can made up some metal. Of your sodium lamp need to have the cathode will have contains sodium. So either the metal used as a cathode or some salts contain the happens how to do the lamp work. This is just one example, you know, how we use to work such um, example 500 volts in the anode and cathode current 2 to 30 amps. The each amp will have its recommended current. So you look at okay, the recommended current 5 milli amps. So you set it 5 milli amps. It use the recommended run the lamp of uh, the lifetime, okay? <coughs> now, what happens is that the, uh, the filler gas, which is the neon gun, will be the anode, use ion. These ions, which are uh, positively charged, will be attracted to the cathode, and will essentially cut the cathode and spike that is created hollow lamps spark the atoms are spread out cathode. you have a lot of these atoms come and so they collide, collide between the atoms will then excite these atoms form atoms and when they drop to ground will emit characteristic wavelengths let's see so you have argon ions form using argon. Argon is used in hollow cathode. It then uh, is heating cathode, which is negative charge. So you get metal atoms being spread out hollow cathode. That's why it's hollow cathode. M0. And when it comes with other atoms, it is connected and it will designate a M star. have seen it before. Okay. So M then is stable, it will go down to M4 and give a characteristic wavelength. But of course, it's just not wave depending on the levels for the atom. You get many waves coming out. Okay? You only use one wavelength to use determination. How to do that wavelength? Yeah, micrometer. Okay. Because the lamp is only one with many waves which are characteristic of human copper lines, sodium lines, dead lines, what have you. So most of them have a element lamp, okay? But we also, I mentioned it, we have a mouth element lamp uh, where the cathode is made up of several elements. So these are examples uh, calcium, iron, nickel. Um, the um, potassium and as I've said now, in order for the to last longer you have to run the recommended currents even on the second kind of source for AS to be what is called electric discharge lamps which are even those uh, follow cathode they are thousand dollars not it's not just hundred dollars expensive electric discharge lamp even more expensive most of the we do not electro charge lamp unless uh, the analysis requires uh, uh, or for elements that, that you detect code at low levels uh, for example snake in the uh, interest snake would be if it's uh, 
and then ask poisoning, for example, to know, you know, what's a arsenic liver or blood or that. So to the low. And so you want the nutrition limit for that that you use. For us, um, one of the elements we use is discharge. So for this is this line cross. Okay, coming a uh, line, line certain emission line certain element is that how it's how it works is different. So the element sort of the element in the quad you have uh, gas here but you have radio field applied to the bottom and get basically the same thing, okay? Get the gas and I this uh, comes with the ex the various atom in order for the patient emitted, the atom to be formed, the atom to be excited, the ground emits and we get so essentially it is the same. As I said, typically intense the light coming is more intense. More emissions bring when you intense light about many 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 decisions bring, okay? So intensity expensive. Don't use it all the time. Another thing that we want to talk about a source is modulation. To modulate thing. Some models, you know, you pick up something. Mod a ten cost. Okay, one two you know? so modules small picking up thing. so it's modulation to think about as picking up the source function how do we by means of mechanic proper although rarely find a mechanic proper now but the idea is if you understand this then you understand you know it's uh, uh, modulation done by pulse supply. So now you have upper front of the source. I'm afraid of the source. Let's say this is a source. Pause. Okay. But this is pause. Have your chop here. Chop essentially a, a um, word here. Circuit a frame where we have some with uh, black. That if the reaction black in part, uh, uh, is obstructed, but the white parts, if the beat hits the white parts, can go through. So, run this one is opaque, but opaque B A B through. So, this chart which is rotate a certain frequency in front of your. Your source all the time. This chop dating. And what that is then a, a beam now chop certain D. When it goes through uh, this, you get this passes this is in uh, a light does this part. Now that's, that's how it here. Or light from the source now uh, sort of is becoming alternating light source. Okay, so we have one off, one off. Okay, a certain frequency which depends on the C and chopper. Okay, the light source is at a certain frequency. So this is by mechanical chopper. The way it's modulate power supply, the power supply to the 
because modulate the light comes at a certain frequency. So the purpose of this the detector now knows if light is frequency it knows from the source. Just like say oh, to me to identify you as where or you know other people or other uh, no where shirt. We are you're the one that must shirt. Take by the red shirt here by dating light source detect those. If come if incident detect at that frequency it knows the source. And the light not that frequency is not from the source. In S you determine what? Back up again. In S what determining are we interested? Big I Tom Zop trust what are we Use S have a shiny on terms, what are we doing? The intensity forward more not, not intensity but what measure how much depends a top absorption must be measuring how much depends absorb what radiation at the which you so it like and measure light themselves so so you have to see the detector just to see light source you don't want to see any light you just want to see much of light coming that source being absorbed and how do the detect know that it knows that it's the source because it's coming at a frequency either by chopper or by Module cost plus. So here we go a little behind where the uh, cost is chopped up by a chop, but it module cost plus. So essentially, you have your light, your flame, your actor, your wavelength, your actor, your no thing three. So being this related supply, the this light. It shows one line, one line, a continuous line. It is out for frequency on, on, on. Okay. When you put a cup, if you to shine the light up, don't light up. When you put a cup, look at, them, don't see on off. Okay. Frequency a high. Frequency. So if you see this, oh, touch light all the time, but it's modulated to a certain. And so one is goes through the same the monochrome goes to detect. This is an example of steam engine. Okay, we have two kinds of configuration for spectrometer. Spectrometer, if we you talk about meter, you have all the elements. Single means have coming from your lamp. Single beam goes through the same through your parameter, goes through the Double so you have your double beam, double beam. Beam is uh, we uh, put a double beam instrument, but have a more positive effect. You here you upper. Just talking about mechanical upper. The here is not so modular the power supply, but the to this double so get the chop is uh, work on a different them that we have aided us um, mirror, light mirror, beautiful. The white part open. So you have chopper and light going to this chopper, which is going to be at a frequency. When, when 
light from the lamp hit the mirror, it reflects as in flame. Get your P R P reference. Ref just go through the flame. How did it sounds like it it's the mirror the mirror motion upper. It's the mirror when the motion of upper is that beam the mirror will be the beam out here. Again, we end up silver and it will be reflected in on chrome and detect at the side when it hits the open part it then be reflected but it will go through the chamber and through the floor. go to where you put them once you beam through the game being at the side you have ref beam so you, you can be at the beam and a beam. This is a beam a common AS. What purpose of having a beam? Usually a beam of course more expensive. You have more thick uh, of uh, as it's now the difference beam does not do the beam. and what it does is ratio these two beams electrically add that compensate for soft drift. What happens when a peak wood is in standard drift? You understand? I have, you understand? A wood thrown in through this. What happens? Come back, probably go just away. Okay. Away you from okay. So mean light from the is stable. It's fifty ten is maybe after time or you doing this for it also. Uh I'm drift to compensate this drift from the will be zero. Zero E is very stick A of group C. It's a, it's a good thing because you understand. You're talking EO from and this is, you know, uh, it's not all it was else. Here you in your, your analysis, you understand, sample your sample. You don't source go to and well, compare for the Drip. have this beam and so it at the the beam ref if they need it will come to electric okay thing has gone okay it will make it the same there is so one times twice of both and h d will be uh, off I lost then sing over now to a show. But all the disadvantage as I have seen now ref B does go the flip. Ref him inside the so plus uh, one problem in AF let you have See the M U straight E. So any and this will flip not with letter will be particle small particle and this part can detect E radiate in the direction. What's it? Not direction. Get all the things. So we if a P will P be to get some zone, but will get to high concentration. So here's the thing: the temperature. You 
difference between go to the problem what problem is be nine not open a problem us the uh be not because it will that is one set much of of, of good treatment just like is from as correct any as that some clinic in game so that uh um theory for it if that book the mod house um that so the problem well like option e have two to see one as a a team and game want to be and have so he so for the same thing will be issue you don't don't get something that it will is your or the that option them as well got off it because we see there at zo chim comics apps e apps of click kid stick that we ask is the na go to in that
Yeah. 